so far in the previous videos, we have seen how I send content from YouTube, for example, to a Google Sheet, also saving captions. We have seen how I then created an automation that sends that content from Google Sheet to a Superbase vector database, also creating embeddings using the OpenAI Embeddings API. And the third step now is to set up the actual chat flow in Flowwise. So we'll be using Flowwise for this. And in this video, we are exactly breaking down how I developed the chat flow that can query data from the Superbase vector database and then answer questions based on that. At first, I set up Flowwise on my local machine so that I didn't need to deploy it on a server, installed it locally and created the chat flow on my local port. To do this, I followed this guide. So first I install Flowwise on my machine using the command prompt interface here. I pasted the command into my machine. And once Flowwise was installed, I can then run it locally using this command here. So if I go back on the command prompt, I'm gonna paste it, run it. And after a few seconds, the Flowwise app is now listening at port 3000. So if I go back to my browser, I will open a new tab and type localhost colon 3000 on the browser and this will open the flowwise interface when you run it locally the interface looks a bit different and also some of the components of chat flows are a bit different because they are updated sometimes and if you deploy flowwise on a server those components are going to be the latest versions always whereas in a local machine it takes more to update by the flowwise team so this is how we can open the interface of Flowwise and then we will create a chat flow. So what I did next is I added a new chat flow and uh, the chat flow looks like this. I named it and then there are some elements in here that I added to the chat flow canvas to show you the latest version of the chat flow that is currently working and deployed on a server and embedded on my website. I will use the actual server where I am managing the chat flow and that I created the chat flow. You can see here because that's deployed on a server via render. There is also a guide on how to do that on the Flowwise official website when it comes to deploying Flowwise on a server using render as well as other services. In this video, I'm not explaining that or how I did it because I wanna focus on the chat flow development. And then in an upcoming video, I will also explain how I deployed the chatbot on a server using render.com and then how I embedded it on my website and how you can embed it on any website. You can see that's the server version and there are agent flows, for example, that is a beta element within the Flowwise AI UI and agent flows are not available on the local version of Flowwise. And there are also other tools here. And also the nodes within chat flows, some of them are updated in the server version, whereas they are still in the previous version on the local version of Flowwise. So just be aware of this, but the local version is great for testing purposes. And that's where I developed the chat flow itself, which I then exported to then deploy it and rebuild it on the server version to actually push it to production. Once we are in Flowwise, we can create a new chat flow from the dedicated section here. I will show you what I created. So that's the chat flow that I created after a few iterations for now, at least. And you can see there are four nodes included here. First, there is the OpenAI embeddings, and this transforms the input message from the user on the chat to an embedding that can be understood by AI. The second step, or node, is the Superbase node that queries the table that we saw in the previous video, that is the documents table. And in particular, it runs the match documents query that I also showed you in the previous video and that I set up in Superbase as a SQL query. Once we query the similarity score of possible content within the documents table in Superbase based on the embedding of the user message, we then output an answer. And this is using the conversational retrieval QA chain node with a specific prompt that you can add here and that I will share as well, if you like, in the description of this video. And you can see that this conversational retrieval QA chain gets a vector store retriever that is the Superbase node. So we retrieve possible content that matches the query. We send that content to the conversational retriever QA chain that also has a memory. By default, a buffer memory will be used. So in this case, I'm using the default memory. And at the same time, the QA chain also needs a chat model. So these are required fields. And that's why here there is the chat OpenAI model. Although we can use any other models, 
within the nodes section you can select Langchain or Llama index and when you go to chat models here you can see all the options of all the possible AI models that we can use in the chat flow. In this case I'm using OpenAI at least for version 1 and then I will refine properly over time. So these are at a high level the four nodes that I'm using and the first node is OpenAI embeddings which you can find here on the node section. You can either type it embedding and you can see all the options that we can use within the embeddings section here or you can locate this node within the embeddings section and you can see all the options available here with all the different tools and one of them is OpenAI embeddings. Once you select this you can set your credentials and you can find your API key and generate an API key in OpenAI in the developer portal. There is a section for API keys you can generate it you will then connect your OpenAI account here by pasting the API key. Then there is the model name so that's the embedding model that we want to use in this particular node. In this case I'm using the text embedding 3 small because it is of size 1536 that is what I'm using in the superbase embedding vector type column. So it needs to match the column in superbase in terms of the size of the model and that's why I'm choosing this model here. And there are additional parameters right now I'm not using any of this but if you check out the OpenAI embeddings API documentation you can find out how to use those and if you want to use them if they are appropriate for your use case. Now once this is done and then connected this OpenAI embeddings output to the Superbase embeddings input. In Superbase you can also attach documents if you want to absert documents but in this case I only absert documents via make so that I send content from Google Sheets to Superbase via make so I do not need any document input in here because I do not want to absert documents every time this chat flow runs. Instead I just want to pass the embeddings I do not use any record manager. I haven't found a use case for this for now. I then connected the credentials here in Superbase. In here I have the API key that you can find in Superbase within your project. You can go to project settings and there is a section for API here on the left sidebar menu and you have the project API keys that you can copy right here from the interface. The URL of the project is at the top so you can copy this one as well and paste it here in Superbase project URL. The table name is the table name that you can find in Superbase and the query name is the query name that I created in the previous video that is match documents in my case but you can define your own name as needed. And then we are using the Superbase retriever to run this node. There are also additional parameters here that we can use. I'm not using any of them. There are some defaults like top K, how many results to fetch and to output from the query. The search type similarity and that's because we are using a similarity field in the output of our SQL query. Otherwise, you could also select max marginal relevance. But in this case, we're using similarity. And once this node runs, it then sends data to the conversational retrieval QA chain. That is a required field. And in the conversational retrieval QA chain, the key thing is to add the prompt. So there is a rephrase prompt here that is used when there is the need to rephrase a question from the user input. And then there is a response prompt. And this is the prompt engineering that goes into creating the chatbot. So that's a very important step in the chatbot creation. So you want to pay attention to this. And there is an OpenAI detailed guide on prompt engineering that I found useful when I did this. And of course, I'm still in the iterations phases of adjusting the prompt based on how the chatbot answers and analyzing the messages that the chatbot sends to the users and vice versa, as well as the feedback that I get on the chatbot. And the chat model is the other input, as I said before, so that's why I'm using the chat OpenAI model here, with the same credentials that I used for the embeddings, the same API key. The model name, that's the OpenAI model that we can select from a list here. I'm using GPT-4.0, that is the latest model. I also set the temperature, that is the creativity, so to speak, of the AI responses when this chat model is used. And in this case, I set it at 0.8, and then you can allow image uploads if you want users to upload images to the chat when they ask questions or interact with the chatbot. You can also set the max tokens, probability, and all these other parameters that you can find documented in the OpenAI API documentation. So you can study that to understand if they are useful for your specific use case. And once we have all these building blocks in place, the chatbot is ready to chat. And so we can save it and then we can test it in the local environment or in the deployed environment using the chat 
widget here. We can also expand it. We can clear chat. And here we can ask any question. And if the chatbot is working well, it will output the answer. And then you can go back and forth, adjusting the prompt, ensuring that the content is read properly, adjusting the format of that, as well as doing a bit of fine tuning in the model, if appropriate. And of course, when you are testing the chatbot as well, as when it is in production, you will consume tokens from the OpenAI API. So you can always monitor the consumption of your tokens from the developer portal at OpenAI. And that pretty much concludes how to create the chatbot or how I created my specific chatbot that I want to answer questions based on the knowledge in my vector database rather than based on large language models overall. So that's why we're using the QA chain. And you can see here at the top, there are some settings that you can use to configure the bot. For example, using rate limiting, setting a starter prompt that the user will see when they first open the chatbot for the first time. You can also set speech to text, which I haven't yet, but we can choose the model to allow users to input voice-based questions into the chat. We can allow chat feedback, restrict domains, which I did in this case, because I want my bot to only be allowed in my own domains for now. So that's why I set this up. We can set specific tools to analyze the chat flow, getting usage, data, error messages. But this is not something that I've done yet, that I'm not touching in this video yet. We can set leads, that is enable lead capture, that would allow you to have a form in the chatbot where users can input name, email address, their question, and then you would get routed those leads and speak with them. And in here, there is also the embedding and code menu, where we can see how I can embed the chatbot. And that's exactly what I used to embed the chatbot on my website. But this is something that I will go through in a separate video that I will publish later on in the upcoming weeks, if there is enough interest. So let me know what you think, if you would like to see how to embed the chatbot to any website out there. For now, thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below and see you in the next one.